Right, so I'm back with another episode of Tap 5 Mats, where I look at mats and also make a Tap 5 of them. So since last week, a Nuka World trailer was released, showing out different sections of the park, some new creatures and some brand spanking new weapons. In case you have been living on a rock, if that's your thing. I did a little mini trailer analysis, so if you need some ketchup, you can go watch that. But without further ado, let's roll that intro. So yeah, I've been trying out this new smoky barbecue technique on my meat for my small butcher shop. So far, business has been rather rough. Also, I don't think staying up here is really too good for my lungs. Anyways, it's been a while since I've had a proper house. I always seem to get evicted for some weird reason. So at number 5 this week, we've got home plate settled in. This mod renovates the house you can buy right here in Diamond City. So you jump straight down from here, wait on the world's slowest elevator up to the mayor's office and walk up to talk to his secretary. Now she will ask you to pay 2000 caps for this house, but with the new renovations it's worth it. Before it was just a dark shithole, but it's really come along. So you pay the caps and in order to skip another slow elevator ride, you try to do some hardcore parkour, but instead you fall through the side of the roof and die. So instead you just make your way down there and go to the marketplace, then check out your brand spanky new home. So off on the left you've got a mattress, some food and some toys for dark meat, a shelf with some lovely drugs, and all around you you've got various crafting stations. Moving on you've got shelves with some teddy bears, a little washing and ironing section, a dining and kitchen section, and then a living room section with a very comfy couch. But more importantly, various paintings of some kittens. It's really spicing the place up. Upstairs you've got a bed with a girthy teddy bear, and on the second floor you've got a little workspace with a terminal, a miniature teddy bear and some figurines. So overall, a beautiful looking house. They've really done a bang up job renovating this place. The only downside is that Travis won't shut the fuck up on the radio. But since we're in Diamond City anyways, I've got an idea. Oh, uh, um... Hi. And just make sure you take us close too for uh, good measure. Now for some reason the entire town suddenly was pissed off at me and started shooting at me. So I kinda had to leave Diamond City. But that was quick, I don't think I've ever been evicted that fast. I was actually starting to like that place, so yeah I had to move back into my castle. Unfortunately my castle is still a mess. There's just Preston clones everywhere. I don't even know what this one is sitting on. And if that wasn't bad enough there's also still a bunch of Miniman propaganda on the wall. So I kinda need some different decoration to even it out a bit. So I'll go with personal paintings. So this, as the name would suggest, allows you to make your own personal paintings. Just have to find a spot on the wall that isn't covered in Miniman propaganda, open a building menu, go to the paintings tab and place down some blank canvases. Now you will have to go to a different dimension that is your computer. I know we're really breaking the fourth wall here. But go to your game folder, then data, textures, set dressing and PP. Here you will find all the blank canvases you can edit. Now obviously you need an image editing program to make an image. And paint won't do, unfortunately. But you can use paint.net, photoshop or gimp and when you're done with your artwork you simply overwrite the DDS file and you're all set. So I decided to make some of my own promotional material to help expand my brand presence in a wasteland. Beautiful. It does seem that the frame actually cuts out part of your work area. So now nobody can understand my advertisement for my butcher shop as well as my cat sanctuary. Yeah, this mod is great for soliciting as well as advertising your own services. So if you're good at using image editing programs, you can really just spice up your settlements. Overall, a pretty cool mod. Anyways, I feel a bit empty-handed right now, so I really just need a weapon. So what better than plasma swords? At number 4. Now to get your hands on some plasma swords, it requires a bit of work. First you have to go to the very top of the Pritwin, then go right to this bit right here, and spin around exactly 6 times. Then go to the very front and jump down, and you'll see this massive pile of swords that magically appeared. So take exactly 5, because that's all you need. Now you gotta make sure they don't fall into the wrong hands. I mean, you're right on a print win, there's wrong hands all around you. So make sure you flip them off first, and then lay down an explosive of some sort. And casually make your way down. Now do make sure that you watch out for the bits of plasma sword that might rain down. Cause those might hurt you. So these things are pretty cool, they look beautiful, and when you hit something it leaves a little mark corresponding to the blade's color. And they also get good sound effects. Now you can add a few things to the handle, but most importantly you can choose one of 5 colors by selecting the wavelength corresponding to that color. So 660 nanometers for red, 610 nanometers for orange, 540 for green, 450 for blue, and 410 for violet. And each wavelength does something different. They were definitely good enough to clean up my castle just a bit. 
But all these fancy colors on these light emitting swords made me think of this other universe. Where they also got light emitting swords of some sort. Were they foils? Epes? Man, I took a fencing class this one time, I should really know this. Anyways, I can't remember, but at number 4 this week also, and you'd almost think this is a real top 5, but we've got Cal Katarn's Prior Pistol. So to get your hands on this thing, you have to go to Hubris Comics, which is located east-northeast of Diamond City. Simply walk inside, dash the Ghoulified Nerds, and make your way up to the second floor. And casually pick the expert lock while they just wait around. And as soon as you open the door, go inside, close the door right behind you, shoot the rat roach, push back the nerd that won't give you any privacy, and pick up the pistol from the trash bin. It's a perfect tool for taking care of these nerds. It shoots fast, it does a pretty decent amount of damage, it looks good, the reloading animation fits, and it sounds great. It is definitely a handy little sidearm. But if you think it's a tad bit too small, you can also add a rifle receiver, which kinda just makes it bigger. And while you're attaching that rifle receiver, you may happen to find Preston, who literally cannot shut up about yet another settlement while you're hard at work. But when you're done, you've got the perfect tool to claim that bounty. Beyond a big version, the reloading animation does not really fit and there's also some clipping issues, so uh, I would not go with the bulky variant. But the small variant is very cool. But if you can uh, naked right now, we're lacking some proper armor this week, so at number 3 we've got special raider outfits. So some time ago I showed off the special raider gas mask, well the raider wardrobe has expanded a bit since then. You can now combine your favorite raider special gas mask with a raider special outfit. Now these like the Raider gas masks you can craft at a chemistry station under the utility tab. And also like the gas masks they add a special point to their respective special category. So we again have Bloodsucker for Strength, a nice not so clean looking white outfit, Bullseye for Perception with a red hex pattern. I don't know, for some reason this one just reminds me of Oven Mittens. I don't know why. But Doomsday for Perception, for those that like yellow. Curly Wise for Charisma, although I don't really think the teeth pattern makes you look all that much more charismatic. Grease Monkey for Intelligence. On this one I especially like the little engineering scribbles on the outfit, even though they totally do not seem to be related at all. I mean you've got circuitry mixed in with frictional forces, point mass dynamics, and thermodynamics. It's not very coherent, but it does look cool. Next up Green Phantom for Agility with some very cool looking green camo. And finally Lucky Bastard for Luck. The four leaf clovers might just stop incoming bullets. See all these outfits are very distinct and they look great. The only thing I can complain about is the gloves, your fingers seem to be clipping through them. But the author says he's working on that, so one day we'll have gloves without holes in them. But overall a fantastic mod. I still feel like I need a bigger gun though, so at number 2 this week we've got Portable Miniman Artillery without spaces. The name is uh, pretty self explanatory. Instead of needing to assign some dumb settler to an artillery piece, throwing a smoke grenade and then waiting forever until the settler feels like firing, you can blow things up yourself. So you can craft the artillery piece and the shells at a chemistry station under the utility tab. It looks pretty good, but there's some side clipping issues, and overall it just looks kinda a better fight from third person compared to first person. But it's just perfect for taking care of some unfinished business at my castle. That's much better. At number 1 this week though, we've got Nest Survival Bunkers V0.9. So this mod adds in 18 new bunkers and hideouts, as well as two facilities that were supposedly made by the NEST company, which stands for Nuclear Environmental Survival Technologies. Essentially, it's a company specialized in creating personal bunkers for those that were not accepted into the vault program. Now the two facilities are marked on the provided map with red crosses, and the 18 bunkers and hideouts are marked with yellow crosses. So first you go to the NEST headquarters south of Diamond City to check things out there. And this gives you the perfect opportunity to test out your artillery at close quarters, which it was definitely designed for. So make your way up to the second floor, avoid the assaultron that's too busy killing everything, and pick the lock to the room right next to the two skeletons. In here you'll find an eye that you'll need, and two notes. And one of these notes tells you not to trust the teddy bear. So after you're done killing the assaultron that snuck up behind you, be sure to take the oversized teddy bear to keep an eye on it. The other note and the terminal will tell you more about what happened to the nest headquarters. The second place you want to go to is the Nest Personnel Bunker just northwest of the Museum of Witchcraft. But when you're there, you can't help but notice the Mario Queen off in the distance. Fortunately, you've got the perfect tool for the job. So miss the first shot and then compensate until it stops moving. And just fire a few more times to really make sure that Mario the Queen is dead. Absolutely disgusting. Anyways, you can then make your way into the personnel bunker, which definitely gives off some rapture vibes. 
And this place is infested with ghouls, so you make your way downstairs, gently brush up against the door, and slowly teleport through. Then you'll encounter an assembly of ghouls, which is the perfect opportunity to put your light epic skills to the test. Make your way to the very end and then enter the overseer's bunker. So this is a Cold War style bunker intended on recreating the perfect American home, along with dead grass, a pumpkin farm, and an outdoor gym. But when you enter the house, the first thing you'll notice is the big statue. If you then make your way past the cryopod to the bedroom and ignore the mannequin on the bed, that is there for some weird reason, along with handcuffs, and you read the terminal, then the second thing you'll notice is that Fultec was behind it all along. The third thing you'll notice is that the teddy bear was murdered. And the fourth thing you'll notice is that there's a piece of perfectly preserved pie. Delicious. And if that calmed me down a bit, don't you worry. The fifth thing you'll notice is that you're stuck in here forever, because there's literally no way out. So yeah, some parts of this mod could definitely still use a bit of polish. But these two facilities isn't everything this mod has to offer. There is an additional 18 bunkers and hideouts scattered across the wasteland. And these range from holes in the grounds with a bed, to metro cars and train carriages. And there's even a boat. Now some of these hideouts are occupied, so be sure to bring a shotgun. I also checked out the political VIP bunker, which had me jump straight down an elevator shaft, and uh, there were some ghouls tucked away in there. As well as a nasty surprise in the kitchen. But after I crawled my way out of that hole, I went to the Institute Research Bunker, which looked very neat. See, so these bunkers seem to be crafted with care, and on a survival playthrough, they can definitely come in handy. Which overall makes this a very cool mod, and with a little polish, it could be a fan tastic mod. Well, that was it for the top 5, but as always, we can't go through life without bonus mods, so this week we've got Kerbs Broman. Yes, Kerbs Keys hasn't been sitting still since he released his Miltauros. His newest Brahmin entry adds in Bromin and Brodets. I went with the Bromin flavor, and I could choose whether or not I wanted to pimp out my Bromin with sunglasses, horn bling, and uh, balls. So yeah, if you think your standard Brahmin are just dull and boring, then this is definitely the proper mod to pimp him out. But yeah, somehow a bunch of them just waltz straight into my castle. Maybe I forgot to plug up a hole somewhere. Fortunately though, I've dealt with a similar situation before, so I knew just what to do. Well, looks like we got some meatballs on the menu tonight. Anyways, that was it for this week's match. Yet again, some very solid mods in there. Will my Wasteland ads work? Whatever happened to my Sin producer? Will my extra juicy new meatballs be a hit across the Wasteland? Find out potentially next week, depending on what I make up at that point. But until then... See, I don't have a lot to ramble on about at this point. I mean, I say that every week, but this week in particular, it's true. So be sure to watch that video in the bottom left corner. I'm not sure what video that's going to be yet, but uh, also be sure to click that subscribe button on that painting right there in Comic Sans MS, the most beautiful font out there. And yeah, this mod really allows you to be a Wasteland artist. It's a pretty cool mod, I gotta say. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to uh, leave a like, you know, they, they take a decent amount of time to make. I have to like set up cinematic camera angles and really experience the mod to the fullest for my tiny mini review with a slight amount of sarcasm mixed in between there. Yeah. But anyways, Nuka World should be out soon-ish. As to whether or not I can do a playthrough, I'm not sure. Uni is starting up pretty much at that point. I think it's supposed to come out on a Tuesday, and I'm pretty sure Uni starts that Monday, so I'm not sure whether or not I'll have the time to do a proper playthrough on that. But what I will probably do is, uh, you know, make some battles involving some new horrific Nuka World creatures. That is bound to happen. Also, we'll probably see some new Nuka World related mods, so it uh, should be an exciting time. But anyways, that was all I had to say, so until next time...